Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek, and today I'm finally going to talk about video games. I know, I know. We've been doing Pokemon a lot. We still do Pokemon. Even though I said we're rebooting the channel, I have still been doing Pokemon. Which, I want to continue doing Pokemon because we have Pokemon games coming out. Is it this week coming up? It is. It is. It's coming out soon. I think Diamond and Pearl remakes are this week or next week. One, they're, they're, they're coming. But we'll be streaming those. That's going to be my first comeback stream as, you know, coming back to stream. And I'll be doing Pokemon. Because I've never played Diamond and Pearl before. And that's something I wanted to do. But let's not talk about Pokemon right now. Let's talk about some games that I've actually been playing recently. And I actually finished... I actually finished them earlier, like last week and today, uh, two games that you know I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed quite a bit. I just want to talk a little bit about them. Uh, there'll be a little bit of gameplay, and probably uh, that way you guys can see the games. I didn't record any of the gameplay, <laughs> which I need to do that, but I was playing on console, which, uh, you know, I should have been playing on PC maybe, but, you know. I wanted to play on console. For some odd reason, I've been playing a lot of console games. I got this PC, and I'm just like, you know what? I don't want to play the Xbox. You know, I don't want to play the PlayStation. Which that reminds me, I need to play through Deathloop. <sighs> got so many games. Too many games. How am I ever going to do this? I am so far behind on games right now. Like, really far behind. <laughs> I, I used to be on top of things, used to complete the newest games when they came out, but I've not really been on top of things for a while. But we're gonna, let's go ahead and talk about a game. One of the games I was actually excited for this year, which I look forward to these games every time they come out. Um, they're not the best games in the world, but they're fun to me. Uh, gets me lost for about 30 hours, and that's Far Cry 6. Now, I was looking forward to Far Cry 6 because I, I love, like I said, I love the series, except for number two. I've never played number two, which, as I said, I'm far behind on games, so I need to play Far Cry 2 eventually. Played all the other ones. But Far Cry 6 came out just last month, back in October. And it took me a couple weeks to play through it. And like I said, I, I just don't have the time to get down and play all these games like and finish them really, really quick like I'd like to. But I was playing Far Cry 6, and I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It kind of took me back to Far Cry 3. Um, you know, you're on this big island, and you have this lust jungle all over the place, but this is kind of like Cuba for some reason, I guess. It's not Cuba, but it's Cuba. It's basically Cuba. And the cool thing about Far Cry games is they always have these great villains. You had Voss and the other ones. The Preacher and uh, um, Bond Guy, Far Cry 4. I should probably look these up before I But they always have these really cool villains. But the newest villain, which is uh, played by... I forgot his name, but it's Gus Fring from Breaking Bad. And he actually plays a lot of villains in a lot of TV shows. He was in The Mandalorian. He's the one with the dark saber. Got his name too, but they kind of underutilized him in this. Like, you're playing through the game, and you do a few missions, and there will be a cinematic with him speaking to the nation or talking to his son, which he is kind of menacing. He's always been menacing in everything he's been in that I know of. Um, he was menacing in Breaking Bad. He was in Warian. Um, he's he's just a really good at playing the villain, but they underutilized him. He wasn't. I felt like they took away from him, maybe because of money, which Ubisoft has plenty of money. You can give the guy money, you give more cutscenes with him. I would have liked to see. It would have been kind of cool to see like more stuff with him, like more cinematics. Which there's a lot of cinematics in Far Cry Six compared to something like Far Cry 5 and 4. And it's kind of refreshing, like I said, to actually sit down and enjoy some of the cutscenes because they're actually pretty well made. Uh, some of the characters in the new Far Cry game are not that great. A lot of... Um, they're kind of... I can't think of the word. You're going to notice this thing. It's going to be 
Derek, you can't think of anything at all. You have a, a bad head. You just can't think. Yeah. Just can't think. Stereotypes. That's what it is. Stereotype. A lot of the characters, a lot of stereotypes, um, which I'm not trying to call anything out being woke or anything. Like, I don't care about that. But it was a lot of stereotypes, and it kind of fell in. Uh, and a lot of the Far Cry games are kind of like that. Um, actually, a lot of video games in general are like that. You always have these stereotypical, uh, what you would think uh, somebody would sound like. And uh, I don't know if that's racist or... I don't know. It's stereotypical. And there's a lot of that. You know for sure this is taking place in Cuba. But it's not Cuba. Ubisoft said it wasn't Cuba. But it's Cuba! It basically is Cuba. The main character this time actually has a voice for once. Um, he actually, he's a pretty good character. I think his name is Danny. Um, you can actually choose between a male and a female. Um, there's no options for, um, binary, uh, transgender, anything like that. It's just male or female, female, generic, um, which is cool too. Um, but they actually have a voice or actual characters that you can actually relate and feel for, which is great. And the story, it's not the best but it tells the story that it wants to tell without going too far out um i mean the character and the cast are quite good um and the story is pretty good i mean it's not the best far cry 3 had the best story maybe far cry 5 had a really good story it was weird but i really like the prophet joseph in that i think that's his name and I really like Far Cry 5. It's probably one of my favorite Far Cry games. Um, next to Primal. Primal was sweet. With a bevy of new weapons and new abilities, and you have this new backpack missile launching bastard called the Supremo. It's this really cool rocket launcher thing on your back, and you actually fill up this meter during uh, action. At, during action, you can fire off missiles, and there's different uh, versions of it. But I never messed with the other ones. I, I didn't see a point. Like, you know, the main one's probably the best one. I'm sure uh, anybody that's played the new game kind of made, you know. I went through the whole game and never changed the Supremo. And there's like five or six different ones. They took away the actual, uh, there's a system, um a leveling system. I know you had skill points in other games. It's not in this game. You actually just level up and you buy weapon attachments, kind of like the other games. There's a bevy of weapons. Uh, some of them are behind paywalls. Yes, there's microtransactions in the game, which unfortunately sucks. It really does, just a little bit. But I don't know why Ubisoft puts microtransactions in a single player game. I don't even think there's any multiplayer this time around. I don't even think there's co-op. There might be. I didn't play co-op. I just played the single player game. The graphics, they're great. You can tell the engine is actually losing a little bit of heat. They've been using the same engine since Far Cry 3. Um, I mean, if you played Far Cry 3 and you played Far Cry 6, yeah, there's some subtle differences if you're playing on the highest settings, but you might not be able to tell the difference if you're in the jungle in Far Cry 6 or if you're in the jungle in Far Cry 3. You might not be able to tell what game you're playing. If you're just a regular person, you see, hey, that guy's playing Far Cry 6. No, that's Far Cry 3. Oh, really? Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, it looks the same. It's the same engine. I kind of think they should actually retire this engine at this point. Uh, again, the game looks great. Especially on newer consoles like PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, which where I played was the Series X. Um, it looks nice in 4K. Uh, it runs smooth. I did not run into any problems such as crashes or anything like that. It was fun. Uh, the game, game length, you have a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of side missions. There's a lot of main missions. But some, for the most part, when you're playing a game... I didn't feel the need to do a lot of side missions. Like, you have cockfighting and all the other traps of a um, open-world survival FPS. 
you kind of get that. It's an Ubisoft game. If you played an Ubisoft game, you know what you're looking at. You're clearing out bases. You're taking over territories. You're getting new weapons. I found it really easy to be stealthy in this game compared to a few other games. I literally just played the game with a sniper rifle, a bow and arrow. I didn't use any of my... Uh, you get amigos, like those are pets, just kind of like all the other games where you get these special partners. They're usually animals. And you get some pretty cool animals in this one. The main one I used was either the alligator or the uh, chicken. It's pretty good. There's some pretty cool mission, side mission with the chicken, which is pretty cool. I don't want to spoil the game, so we're not going to talk too in depth about the story. But if you like Far Cry and if you want something, a meaty single player experience, what the hell? What is coming on my screen? Stream loose bits and pieces. Oh, okay. I guess I got a stream loop. Something I, I just noticed it popped up. Damn, I need to not do that. But Far Cry 6 was pretty good. And if, I, I don't want to give a rating. I just want to say, if you like Far Cry, you know exactly what you're getting into. If you don't like Far Cry, then it's not going to change your mind. It's, it's a fun game. And uh, you it's polished. It's probably one of the most polished Far Cry games in terms of content. And it's actually interesting. It's pretty interesting. Well, let's go ahead and move on from Far Cry. And let's talk about Call of Duty Vanguard. Now... Call of Duty Vanguard is not, not a lot of people seem to be interested in it, which I'm sure it's going to sell gangbusters. It's Call of Duty. Call of Duty sells a lot. Every time. It doesn't matter. You slap Call of Duty on a jar of mayonnaise, people are going to play with that jar of mayonnaise. I didn't even do that. That's a good idea after the game. Jar of mayonnaise, Call of Duty. But no, Call of Duty Vanguard was pretty good, uh, in my opinion. Now, I love World War II games. And I play all the Call of Duties mainly for the single-player content. Now, I used to play the multiplayer a lot with World of War, uh, Call of Duty 2, and the first Black Ops. But I never really dived back in. Oh, World War II. World War II. I did like that, too. I never really got into Multiplayer, which I kind of fell out of that. I used to love multiplayer. You played games like uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, Halo, um, Gears of War even, and Call of Duty, Unreal Tournament. I used to play a lot of stuff like that. And if I'm, me saying Unreal Tournament, I mean Unreal Tournament, you know, the Game of the Year edition, I think it's 1999. If you know, you know. You, you, you have to know. But the new Call of Duty is pretty interesting. Stories actually, I liked it. I liked it. I've seen a lot of people say, hey, it's another Call of Duty. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed the campaign more so than definitely more than Cold War. Way better than Cold War, actually. Actually, it's probably one of my favorite Call of Duty campaigns since the last Modern Warfare game. And, I mean, that might not be saying much. I mean, you, you have your explosive action set pieces. Call of Duty is going to Call of Duty, and you're going to get a lot of Call of Duty in this Call of Duty. They always say the boots on the ground whenever they go back to World War II. Like, hey, this Call of Duty is different. It's boots on the ground. But you said it was boots on the ground the last three games. Oh, it is. It is boots on the ground. That's a new speak for, hey, Call of Duty's boots on the ground. Nobody likes uh, <laughs> jetpacks and anything like that. It's moving towards Halo. The multiplayer is fine. If you played Call of Duty before, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. I have not played Zombies. I've never really been a Zombies fan outside of the first game. Never really done anything for me. I mean, there's I, I feel like there's no progression for me. It's just wave after wave after wave of Zombies. And I kind of got bored and burnt myself out when it originally came out. So I've never really gone back to it. But the multiplayer is pretty good for the most part. The graphics are they're running off the uh, new Call of Duty engine that was introduced back in Modern Warfare. And it was pretty good. I uh, I liked it. I like I like the multiplayer. I like the the engine. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard goes out with a campaign that tells almost a Tarantino esque story, kind of similar to like Inglorious Bastards. It's an alternative take on World War II. Uh, it was pretty cool. You actually go to different fronts, like the Pacific. You go into you know, Europe. Uh, the Pacific, you go to Australia, you go to Africa. I think you go to Africa. There's actually a 
level I didn't like in the game. I didn't care for it, which I've never really cared for when Call of Duty tries to do this, is whenever I do vehicles, mainly just the airplanes. I don't think they're fun. They're not very responsive. And uh, I didn't like it. I did not like that part of the game. It was pretty. It was cool. The Battle of Midway was pretty cool. I just felt like I couldn't do anything. The, the game was unresponsive for me. I, you know, and we'd have all these airplanes just moving past you. You're like, holy shit. Where, wh what, what, what I do? I don't know what I'm doing here. What, whoa, 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 whoa. There's an airplane there. There's an airplane there under the missile and you dive and you blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. To look at it. It was, it was really weird though. Just the controls of it. It just didn't mesh with me. Um, I say the best version of that maybe was Infinite Warfare with its spaceship missions. I thought that was pretty good. The controls were really good there. I mean, that, it was fine with me. But this one didn't do it for me. It was the spectacle was there. The cutscenes are great. They're kind of long too, uh, and they tell a pretty interesting narrative. I mean, it's not bad at all. You have some characters that, most part, not very memorable outside of. Lady Nightingale. There's Lady Nightingale, and there's a couple other ones. Uh, one of the coolest parts of the game, and I'm not virtue signaling, is when you're in the Pacific and you join the 93rd Company, and um, you know, it was a POC uh, infantry group, and it was really cool. It's really cool. I love the Pacific part, especially. Like I said, I'm not trying to virtue signal, but it's pretty awesome. Uh, to actually see that. I've not seen that in a World War II game. I know they want to try diversity, but that was a really good way to do diversity was with the P the uh, 93rd, which was a real group, and Lady Nightingale. I'm pretty sure that was a real thing, too. Maybe it was a different name, but it's, it exists for the most part. I mean, they, they, they go around things that exist, and they tell a decent story. Uh, the ending was, was good. I don't have anything really bad to say about it. Multiplayer's fine. Yeah, I'm sure there's bugs in it. I'm, I don't, like I said, I don't think I'll do that much uh, outside the storyline. But it was fun to me, like, the whole game experience. It's short. Uh, most Call of Duty games, like, their actual stories may be around five or six hours. That's if you stretch it. Now, if you put it on uh, more difficult versions, which I play Recruit, I know... People will be like, oh, if you play a video game on easy, you're not a real gamer. I just want to play through the game. I just want to hear the story. I want to have fun. And I want to feel like a badass. I don't want to die every five seconds. That's why I've never beat Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Demon Souls. I've not beat any Souls game. So I, that may take my gaming accreditation like out the door. But Call of Duty... Vanguard was a pretty good game. Uh, I highly recommend Mend it, which I highly recommend Far Cry. Would it be good to wait until maybe Black Friday to pick these games up on the deal? Yes. Uh, if you're, like I said, if you play Call of Duty before and you played Far Cry before, you know what you're getting into. There's not really much of a difference. Um, and, I mean, uh, if they change the formula up eventually... Uh, that would be great. I, I'd like to see a newer engine with Far Cry. Call of Duty could still use the same engine. It says keep on pumping out decent single-player campaigns, which that's what I like about this these last couple of years. We've actually been seeing decent single-player content, which that reminds me, once I finish Deathloop, we'll talk about Deathloop as well. we got Halo coming out in December. Uh, the multiplayer is rumored to be out in November the 15th. Which, that's Monday. Man, I didn't realize it was Monday. It is Monday. So there's a possibility tomorrow you actually play the Halo multiplayer. So, uh, yeah, definitely. But guys, thank you so much for watching this. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, if you like Call of Duty, if you like Far Cry, uh, like I said, they're fine. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to hit that follow button and hit that subscribe button. I definitely would appreciate everything. Uh, the gameplay I'm going to attach is probably just going to be from promotional material. Like I said, I didn't record my own stuff, which I need to. Uh, I will actually, if I, whenever I use the gameplay, I'll actually list that as a source within the video where I got that content. 
Uh, but always feel free, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. There will be more gaming stuff. Pokemon's coming out. Halo's coming out. We've got a big year next year for games. Uh, Pokemon cards, everything. It's going to be fun. Guys, thank you so much. I love you, and I'll see you soon.